Okay, the, <coughs> the words of God as the Gospel of John, chapter 6, um, verses 55 through 57, only three verses. Now, let's uh, stand the screen for us to read together in one voice. And so, please stand up. Okay, let's read. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever is my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So the one who feeds on me will live because of me. Amen. You see it? God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Um, uh, several years ago, I saw a very interesting video clip. Um, the video was about the power of words that, that we speak daily. The experiment was to see how the words of good and bad can affect an organism. An experiment team um, actually prepared two sets of bowls of cooked rice which were seared clean. These bowls of rice were cooked in the same rice cooker. One of them was given to a group of people who were asked to speak directly to it words of blessings and thanks. For instance, hey, I love you rice. I thank you for giving me so wonderful nutrition. You are good. And such a good word, uh, this group uh, constantly, day after day, uh, spoke uh, to the rice. And the other group of people were also asked uh, to speak to the uh, other bowl of rice, kind of negative words, and words of cursing and uh, the life-taking words like, uh, oh, you rise, you're ugly, you, you, you're not taste good, <laughs> you're terrible, I hate you. You have no words at all, and such a negative word, the um, captains uh, speaking to the rise. At first, the participants um, thought what unearthly mere words spoken could do to the two bowls of rice. Hmm. They thought, hey, what, what, what is this? You know, what does this, um, uh, the words uh, can do to this um, you know, um, rice? But as time went by about uh, a week, however, they began to be you know, suspicious of their eyes. Strangely enough, the rice which had been blessed, loved, and you know, thanked, brought forth looking good, white, fun, fun, uh, fungi. Fungi with a pleasant odor, whereas the other rice had rotten into black mold with a sickening smell. Now, this is one of many experiments on the real and power effect of the world we speak. Scripture has been testifying about it from the very first book, Genesis, along with many other scripture references. In the book of Genesis, we are witness in God's way of creation. He created the world through nothingness and his very words, saying, let there be light, let there be an expanse between waters, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let the ground appear. Let the land produce a vegetation, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night. Let the water teem with the living creatures and let birds fly above the earth or across the expanse of the sky. Let the land produce the living creatures. God spoke out his word. So creation was formed. Let there be light and there was light. 
everything was created by his world. So things that is formed of the very words of God. So we are actually um, uh, contain the words of God. We are formed uh, the, of his word. Amen? Amen? So that's why we have the power of words. What the creation account implies is that all that came to its being is made of the spoken, blessed words of God. When God said, let there be light, it's, just, uh, it's not just a mere spoken word. It's not just uh, the word of a commandment. It is a word of blessing. Let there be is, is a really a word of blessing. Amen. And a curse was said, let there be not. <laughs> right? Let there be not things, non-existent. It's curse. That's why you know, the, um, the great thinker in Christian history, like uh, St. Augustine said, things that is not is evil. God created things that is in existence that God created is good. So let there be something when God commanded, it is good, it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. Being is blessing. Amen. Satan always uh, tried to deprive us of a thing that has been given from our God. Right. Satan always is commanded, let there be not. Let there be not things that is in existence. Let there be not joy. Let there be not happiness. Let there be not hope. Let there be not unity. Let there be not peace. That's what always our Satan is speaking to the world, to us. Where Satan is, there is nothing. Where Satan is, there is void. Where Satan is, there is a lack. But where God is, there is the fullness. Mm -hmm. where, where God so is speaking, uh, there is always existence, mm -hmm. being. Mm -hmm. That's why we are here, because God is with us. Amen. Today, you are here because God is speaking to you. Let there be Sam. Let there be Dennis. Let there be William. Hey, let there be... David, that's why I'm here. It's the word of blessing, let there be. So all the creation is intended to be sustained by feeding on the words of blessing and the love which are spoken by the Creator. The spoken words of blessing and love by the Creator is termed as the law or commandments. We are to feed on, you know, feed on the words of the Lord so as to bless ourselves and others. Just as the bowl of rice, which produced nice looking white fungi and good smell by hearing the words of blessing and love. Amen. So that we need to feed our souls with the words of the Creator's blessing. But the fallen human nature gravitates toward exchanging, cursing, negative, life-taking words between fellow human beings. The creatures in the Garden of Eden tempted man to eat of the forbidden fruit, that is a serpent. Serpent tempted the man to eat of the forbidden fruit, right? In the Garden of Eden, the fruit we should not feed on. This forbidden fruit can be the words of a curse and hurt. 
negativity and hopelessness that we should not express. We should not do that by feeding on the words of our life, by keeping our intimacy with God. We should feed on the words of God in order to avoid uh, eating the fruit of uh, uh, the forbidden tree, which I mean today, um, the words of negativity and the curse. We need to keep our intimacy with God. We know that the tempter in the Garden of Eden after cursing Adam to fall was eternally cursed by God to eat dirt. The word dirt in Genesis chapter 3, 14 I see it as a symbolic for the words of a curse, hopelessness. Now the Satan was cursed to hear the words of a curse and hopelessness eternally. Now if we um, see the Genesis chapter 3, 14, it says, Cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. Because the serpent um, caused Adam to fall, God cursed him. And the curse is to eat dust all the days of the serpent life. Now, eating dirt, I mean, is a symbolic to hear the words of a curse, hopelessness. Man also has been cursed that he has to toil and moil with this dirt to produce food. Now he has to eat of the food of dust. So Genesis chapter 3, 17 through 19 said, Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field by the sweat of your brow. You will eat your food until you return to the ground. Since from it you were taken for dust you are, and to dust you will return. Now that man should eat the food from dust can be referred to as the curse that he lives with the words of a curse, condemnation, death, hopelessness, and all negativities in relationship with others. That tragedy has been <clears throat> running throughout human history, and it still goes on. You know, exchanging the words of a curse and negativity and hurts between nations and uh, peoples are still going on, right? The, the one, um, the good example is a war in Ukraine. The war is, uh, you know, more dramatic and um, destructive uh, way of expressing how the the exchange of words, uh, exchanging words of a curse, isn't it? But to the salvation of man under such a curse, the very world which created heaven and earth and all the creatures in them came in person by the name of Jesus. Jesus came to the world as a a life-giving and a life-sustaining word of God that we should feed on. Humanity should stop eating the words of negativity, hurt, curse, death, and evil, lest we destroy ourselves. So, Jesus says to us to feed on his body and his blood. 
So John chapter 6, uh, 55 and the following. Let's read together. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me, he will also will live because of me. Amen. Jesus has come to us as the Word of God incarnate in a human being. <clears throat> so his body and blood is the Word of God. Amen. Eating the body and blood of Christ is a figurative expression of hearing the words of God and living out it. So we should eat of Jesus' body and drink of his blood so that we abide in him and he in us. It also means that we live as witness of the word of Jesus. The word of blessing and the word of life. So we become a conduit of blessing towards others. Our, you know, our ways of living should be an expression of his word in loving and caring and blessing. More importantly, we should read our mouth of words of any curse negativities, no matter what, even though you are full of anger when you are, are hurt by someone, you know, you are very um, tender to express out the word of a curse, but the, you need to muzzle your mouth. So that way, we are expressing our Lord Jesus Christ, His um, word. We have, the, our life should be the very word of our Jesus Christ, our Lord. That is what is meant by eating his, word, his body and his blood. Amen? Amen? We are called by the Lord God to feed on his body and his blood. Right? We have to feed on this life-giving word, so that we can be true um, the reflectors of his goodness. Amen? Amen? So we are here as the body of Christ to feed on his word a blessing and life. That's what the church is all about. That is your calling by our God. Amen? Let's feed on the words of God every day. Let's bow our head. Father, we thank you for your sending your son Jesus Christ as your very word. So, <laughs> believing in him means in a practical sense to, um, to express his word of love and blessings in our activities, in our world. So, Father, help us to read our mouth of all kind of um, words of a curse and negativities, no matter what, instead, fill it with the word of blessing towards uh, others, so we be the light and sword and hope to the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, let's sing the closing song.